Hey guys, I'm just going to do my reaction video to the the tr the teaser trailer, I guess, to X-Men Dark Phoenix. The, I, guess like the, I don't know, maybe the 12th or 13th entry in the X-Men franchise. Um, it continues following the alternate timelines, you know, set by, you know, First Class and Days of Future Past. And, you know, I, I feel like it's going to, you know, be like, I guess like a... I guess it could take another step of the Dark Phoenix storyline, hopefully a better version of the storyline. I know that people have been, this has been contentious, contentious, contentious among fans on, you know, whether they feel like it's too much of a retread, it's redundant, you know, people, you know, I personally feel like if they're going to do a better version of a storyline we wanted to see, a more faithful, faithful version of the storyline we wanted to see, then... What we got in X Men: The Last Stand is that really the worst thing that can happen? So I'm gonna watch the trailer and give you my thoughts on it. You think you can fix me? To you, you are not broken. This is the end, beautiful friend. The mind is a fragile thing. It takes only the slightest tap to tip it in the wrong direction. This is the Charles, what did you do? I had to keep her stable. I protected her. From the truth? Really? There's another word for that. I came looking for answers. You feel like you don't belong here. You don't. They can't begin to comprehend what you are. She's changing. And what? You didn't come here looking for answers. You came here looking for permission. Jean. She's all rage. Pain. And it's all coming out of us. Jean lost control. But she's still our friend. This is your fault, Charles. The world is on the brink. I'm sorry. I didn't stop it sooner. You're always sorry, Charles. And there's always a speech. And nobody cares. There's still hope. Don't do this. They're right to fear me. I've seen evil. I'm looking at it now. Okay, so the release date for this looks like it's going to be Valentine's Day, um, 20, 2019. I was really hoping this movie was going to come out this fall, but I guess they pushed it back because they wanted to do more reshoots. And maybe it had to do with the fact that, you know, Disney was buying out um, 20th Century Fox or... Or it's called 21st Century Fox, but it's like every time we see movie trailers from that company, it still says 20th Century Fox. So I don't know. So I don't know what the deal with that is. Um, I guess like the most like, you know, it's a pretty decent trailer. Um, I feel like the most like the thing that like irks me the most is that I don't know, I'm kind of surprised by is that. In Days of Future Past, you, you we had that scene in which um, the young Charles Xavier was reading Wolverine's mind and seeing, like, all the, f you know, future events and, like, all the stuff he experienced in the original trilogy and the original timeline, including Wolverine being forced to kill Jean Grey after, he became, after she became Dark Phoenix in that timeline. Um... I mean, granted, I mean, he didn't see the, granted, they didn't have the scenes where he didn't see the parts where it's like, oh, he put like psychic blocks around Jean Grey for her to control her Dark Phoenix persona and suppress her Dark Phoenix persona. But it's like, but I can't be the only one who felt that way, but I, you feel like you got the impression that between seeing um, Wolverine's future, you know, what happened in that timeline 
And, you know, the events of Days of Future Past where he realizes that him being overbearing overbearing and controlling over Mystique would led her to commit actions that led to the apocalyptic future that was eventually averted in that movie and even telling her that, you know, I was overbearing and controlling of you ever since the day we met and look what that got us. Um, that, especially you got the impression from the end of Days of Future Past when you saw that um, little epilogue in which, you know, Wolverine woke up in the, you know, good re rewritten future where, you know, you know, everybody was alive and well, including Cyclops and Jean Grey. So you figured he learned that that it became more of a learning experience for Charles Xavier in the new timeline that being overbearing and controlling tr towards um, Mystique is, you know, what led him to be overbearing and controlling towards and a bit of manipulative towards um, Jean Grey and how he handled, you know, her Dark Phoenix persona in the original timeline. You know, he realizes that, you know, being overbearing and controlling like, only brings about um, bad stuff. And in X-Men Apocalypse, you, you thought that it's like, oh, by being maybe because of being overbearing and controlling towards Mystique is what led him to be overbearing and a little bit controlling towards Jean Grey and led to the events of the X-Men The Last Stand. But with um, the timeline being reset, um, and especially watching X-Men Apocalypse, you thought that, oh, that Charles Xavier taught um, Jean Grey had a better control of powers instead of just rep rep you know, repressing at least like the Dark Phoenix persona or like the Phoenix persona, especially through the end of X-Men Apocalypse where he told Jean Grey to not be afraid of that side of her, be afraid of her power and just to embrace it and to embrace her Phoenix side and what is, and that's what she and by doing that is what allowed her to defeat and kill Apocalypse. So it's a little bit jarring, disappointing to realize that he made the same mistakes in the new timeline that he made in the original timeline by putting, you know, psychic blocks on Jean Grey to for her Phoenix persona and as was leading to the events of, you know, um, this new movie. And I don't know. It's a, like, it's, it's a little bit disappointing and it's just sort of like, I can understand why people are so apathetic towards, you know, this, this movie doing this storyline again, even though it was going to, in spite of the fact that this is going to improve upon this, you know, how they, their take on the storyline and um, is not going to, like, integrate the, the Cure storyline from the comics and the Phoenix storyline in the comics like it did with X-Men 3. It's just going, it's just going to focus on the Dark Phoenix storyline. Um, I mean, I'm, I want to be optimistic about it. I'm just sort of, I just, I would have thought like just from what I read, what I read about, you know, the story, the, this whole storyline with, you, with, you know, um, Charles Xavier being more prideful and pushing the X-Men to their limits and taking on like more they can handle, especially going into missions into outer space, which you saw the X-Men going into outer space and being exposed to like cos cosmic energy, Gene Grey included, which is what, you know, you know, what awakened that Dark Phoenix persona as opposed to it just being some split personality that was created by Charles Xavier creating these psychic blocks in the original timeline. And I know people are probably going to not like the fact that this looks more like grounded and not going to be as big in scale as X-Men Apocalypse, at least based on this trailer. But, you know, with Simon King Kinberg, who worked on those movies, at least some of these movies, saying that oh, one of the big problems with X-Men Apocalypse was that it focused more on spectacle than characters and story, which I guess there is a grand truth to it, but I don't know. I just walked out of that movie feeling like it didn't really do anything to like distinguish itself from other X-Men movies that it was ultimately kind of forgettable. 
And I'm probably in the minority, whereas like, I didn't hate the performances of Ty Sheridan and Sophie Gray and Alexandra Ship and the other actor who played um, Nightcrawler and Lana Condor as Jubilee, in spite of the fact... Like, I like their performances for what they were. I wasn't expecting them to... At least for, like, you know, Cyclops and Jean Grey, you know, I wasn't expecting them to, like, um, surpass or be on par with, you know, James Marsters, Marsden and, you know, Famke Jensen. But I guess those are my expectations. Maybe people had higher expectations. I didn't. I knew they were going to be a tough act to follow. I, I just enjoyed it for what it was. I, and that was, like, one of the... And I feel like their performances were one of the few memorable things about X-Men Apocalypse where, you know, where it has this, like, you know, it's kind of like, like I said, it's kind of just like kind of generic by the numbers superhero storyline where it didn't do anything to distinguish itself from not only other X-Men movies, but, but movies like, um, what came out that year? I think like it was like Deadpool and, you know, Captain America 3, you know, that came out that year. Um, it's kind of by the numbers and, you know, you had like Jennifer Lawrence kind of phoning in a, phoning in a performance as Mystique and, and it seemed like she was saying like all this stuff about how it's like, she, I don't know what, what her lack of enthusiasm was behind. I mean, I was happy and I was, I liked her performances enough in first class and Days Future Past. X Men Apocalypse. I don't know whether she whether it was because she knew the the script for this for X Men Apocalypse was mediocre, or whether it was because she didn't want to be there because you know she was dating Nicholas Holt at the time. She was dating Nicholas Holt for so long. He played Beast, and it was kind of awkward for her, and she didn't want to be there. But her performance felt very phoned in, which is one of my problems with it. And she said, you know, she was saying stuff with the press, saying like she would rather do another Guardians of the Galaxy movie before she did another X-Men movie and even if you even if you Google the X-Men Apocalypse gag reel, you can kinda of tell she didn't want to be there. And but then she came back saying and but then she's saying like, oh she insisted like she came back to the to and even saying stuff to the press like she only signed off for Dark Phoenix because it's like as a personal favor to Simon Kinberg Kinberg, you know, it was supposed to be his directorial debut. And just saying is like, oh, I guess I kind of screwed myself. And then she released a later statement saying like, oh, I'm doing this for the fans. So I don't know whether she's actually going to put any kind of effort into this into her performance at this point after X Men Apocalypse. Um, it's hinted. I mean, it, I'm getting the impression that she's the person who's in the grave in this movie, given how, you know, how upset, you know, how upset um, Magneto and Beast are with Professor Xavier, it has less to do with, um, you know, how he treated Jean Grey and more to the fact that um, Mystique's most likely death was the result of how he handled Jean Grey and her dark Phoenix persona, or like repressed her Phoenix persona. But, um, I don't know, I think like they had Jessica, they said Jessica Chastain was supposed to be, I don't know if she's supposed to be a Char, member of the Char, the Star Jammers, um, and push her to become the Dark Phoenix. Um, whether Magneto's is going to be evil again just for the sake of the plot, like we did in X Men Apocalypse, um, or whether he's going to be more of like, you know, morally flexible, that remains to be seen. Like, again, this is only a teaser. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I didn't hate the trailer, but I think my biggest concern going going back to my biggest concern is, you know, Charles Xavier is still making the same mistakes that he made, um, handling Jean Grey as she as he did in the original timeline, which is kind of disappointing. And I guess the reason they're not going as big in scale, like I said, they're not going as big in scale is because they felt like, you know, um, X Men Apocalypse is um, downfall was the fact that it was more style over substance, and that's why they're trying to not go as big in scale with this one. But 
Honestly, guys, I don't know. I guess I'm one of those people who, as much as I, I grew up as an X Men fan, I read the comic books, I read, I watched the animated series. I can understand people's gripes with this um, franchise. I have similar gripes. The movies have not the fran this mo the movies have not always stuck the landing, but I still appreciate the whole franchise as a whole for what it is, and. You know, considering, you know, given the whole buyout by Disney, I'm hoping that, you know, that with between this and New, Mut New Mutants coming out next year, that at least the franchise goes out on a high note. I mean, it's sad that, um, you know, there were enough X-Men characters from the Marvel pantheon that they could have, this could have been its own expanded, ideally this could have been its own, like, cinematic universe. It didn't need to, like, you know, be bought out by um, Disney and merged with the Marvel with cinematic universe just to have the most faithful adaptations ever. Like I felt like it felt like it should have been separate. And, you know, people, you know, Fox didn't always have the right people to handle this franchise, depending on the movie entry that make it truly faithful that, like I said, it should have been its own cinematic universe. And I guess one of the big plot holes I had the comic books is with is you know that the avengers and other superheroes they have superpowers and people like pr you know praise the ground they walk on and yet yet x-men they're born with their powers and they didn't get them from accidents but it's like there's a double standard in which the humanity treats them as like freaks of nature and dangerous when it's like the avengers you know they have powers even if they weren't born with them, they're capable of being just as dangerous. So it's like, why is there a double standard standard at all? And you know, that's why I thought realistically it would be better to keep it separate, but it didn't play out that way. And then of course you have like, you know, Captain America and you know Agents of Shield season three, in which the Sokovia Accords like wanted all superheroes to be held accountable for their actions and you know you'd be be govern you know, be registered, you know be government sanctioned now so if they ever integrate um the x-men characters into the mcu at least they have that going around assuming assuming that still sticks you know given the events of infinity war but you know avengers 4 is going to involve time travel you know trying to rectify you know all the deaths that most if not most of the deaths from that movie who knows but at the end in all in all, I enjoy the X-Men franchise and in spite the movie franchise, in spite of its shortcomings, I just want this to at least go out on a high note before, you know, it's, it gets rebooted again. And even though it's kind of sad, just kind of sad for this to happen, considering it's like, you know, I like James McAvoy, you know, Michael Fassbender in, in particular as their respective roles, so... But, you know, it is what it is. And again, I just hope this franchise goes out on a high note, you know, before the buyout. But, you know, anyway, guys, um, did you like the trailer? Were you underwhelmed? Are you still interested in checking it out? In spite of, if even if you thought the trailer itself was underwhelming, how do you feel about the X-Men franchise? Um, you know, are you hoping this goes out on a high this ends on a high note regardless. So leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.